Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to IK's Tech Talks. This is Ryan here. And uh, this week, we're going to be going over um, Lurson Mastering Console from using it in a standalone plugin to throwing it in the DAW and also transferring your projects to iOS, which is actually really cool and great for doing the, the infamous car test. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in here. Um, stay tuned to the very end, and you're going to enter your chance to win a, um, a free copy of Lurson Mastering Console for iPad, for Mac PC, um, pretty much a $300 bundle, uh, completely free just for watching. So make sure to stay tuned to the very end. Like, subscribe, and um, if you miss your chance, you'll have another chance um, for one of these next giveaways. So let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so you can see I have the standalone plugin or the standalone software open here. And um, there's a couple of different things here. I'm gonna start from the very beginning, very basic. We're gonna go to the settings window, which is right up here. Um, this is gonna be your audio MIDI setup, um, your GUI size, HD engine, DDM. Um, essentially, you wanna use an ACO technology for Windows. Um, direct audio and Wasapi is great for movies, video games, stuff like that, but ACO is really the way for anything real-time audio processing wise. I have a really big buffer here, and that's really because um, I wanna allow myself as much processing power as possible. I'm not too worried about latency. Um, you should really only worry about the buffer size when it comes to tracking. That's where it's really gonna get you. And in those cases, I'm usually around 128, maybe 256, depending on the instrument, the player, and all that. You have GUI size, small and standard. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to stick to standard, but small is pretty good if you're on a laptop screen, stuff like that. Um, DDM, digital um, mastering uh, delivery. So check out the user manual for a full explanation, but essentially this is going to get your stuff ready for, iTunes, for Apple Music, for um, Spotify, all that great stuff. And HD Engine is going to be the high quality engine that you're going to uh, hear today. So let's go ahead and take a listen to the actual song. Um, that I've built today. You're going to see a little bit of automation here. And um, if you've been watching the Tech Talks, you're, you're going to recognize this track. This is from our custom shop live stream tutorial. Um, definitely check that one out if you've not. Um, great tutorial, all free stuff, and how to get a great sound. So let's take a listen. Okay, so you can hear a little bit of what's going on there. Um, you're going to see my input drive here is pushed to 3 dB during this little verse bit. And for the rest of it, um, I have the push pushed up. So check this out. You're going to see um, my push is all the way up at 41 for this kind of... Here, let me play it back. So for that ride bell, I really wanted to push a little bit of the highs. Um, a little bit clarity. Everything is pretty much plus nine here because of this push knob. I'm going to walk through the signal chain here and um, you can see the signal chain from this section up top. Uh, this is the tube equalizer and that's what you're controlling here. And this is going to be your, um, you're going to be at 12 dB uh, boost or uh, attenuation from this control here and the push knob is going to really bring that around. Right, so you're going to see you can pull something out of your mix for, say, the verse and then push it during like the bridge, the chorus, stuff like that. Um, 
for mastering, you kind of want to be transparent. You don't want to do too much. Lurson likes to say, or Gavin Lurson likes to say, um, he, it's like he, you don't want to even know that he was there. Um, it's more, it's all about the music. It's not really about the whole, you don't want to make too many, too many movements. So here, let me put this back to the beginning and you're going to see my input drive is staying pretty steady. I don't use too much of it. I go up about 3 dB here and that's just to kind of push out this part. And, um, I didn't really want to push the EQ for that section. So that's the tube equalizer here. Now we have the solid state equalizer, which you cannot change the settings on. That's going to be a signature sound of Gavin Lurson and uh, Lurson mastering, uh, which it's, uh, if you listen to them talk about the plugin, we have a bunch of videos where they go over it. Um, they'll, they'll explain a little bit of what's going on there. I don't think they want to give away that secret though. Um, if you're just tuning in, make sure to like, and subscribe. We're going to be giving away, giving away a copy of Lurson Master and console for Mac PC, as well as iOS today at the very end. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. The next thing is a tube limiter. That's actually going to be a very mu limiter and depending on the style you pick and these are going to be a little like presets that you're going to see the chain move around when i select so let's see classical um you see that's completely gone they're not going to use that for this chain um hard rock metal similar concept you have hip-hop um, and you can see these different things changing and flashing to really tell you where you're looking like a brighter sound you're going to see the bright brightness up here pushed out and you're going to see some of the compression move for, say, more or less glue. So let's check out less glue. You see all these guys move, right? So I'm going to reload my project here, get my settings back. And you see the tube limiter one comes back. Um, you go then into the solid state de -esser, And that's going to be set to a specific, uh, specific settings. It's going to be a fast attack, fast release. It kind of tames the brightness, um, which may have been imposed by, say, the 2BQ early on in the chain um, when it reaches that threshold. So that's a really cool tool. And um, this threshold is going to be automatable in the DAW. So if you have some parts that are heavier with cymbals and um, sibilant sounds, grab this guy. It's going to help you out. Um, and you go into the solid state compressor before you go out. So the solid state compressor is going to be the glue that pulls everything together the threshold, um, or sorry, the range here for the makeup gain goes from 2 dB all the way up to 7. And you're going to see your threshold goes from 7 to 12 dB. And you can always command click anything in the software if you want to reset it to default. These guys also move. So if you like to set certain things, I like to say this is my maximum, this is going to be my minimum, and this is where I want to push to. You see that's how I used it in this track. Um, but yeah, this solid state compressor goes into a brick wall limiter to make sure your sound is crystal clear at the end. You don't have any peaks that uh, distort or anything like that. So um, on top of the signal chain, which does go from this side all the way through, you're going to have a couple of different things. You have meters. This is going to tell you if your, your input meter or your input signals level on the VU meter, and this is going to be the process level. Um, you have stereo and mono monitoring which is really good. I like mono um, testing for building for frequencies that have built up because sometimes when you're in stereo, you might not hear that. Say you're um, somebody who's listening on an iPhone, it might be really muddy uh, depending on if they only have one speaker and they don't have the true stereo. So it's always good to check your stuff in mono. I know there's a lot of great articles on that topic. I won't go over that too much, but let's go ahead and play the track one more time, but I'm going to show you it without Lurson first and I'm going to trigger it on once the part repeats.
you can really hear what it's doing when I bypass it and I um, take it off. You can hear there's a little bit of um, push for some parts. It pulls in other parts. And you really want to be dynamic when you master. You don't want it to be too sterile of a sound. Um, you can see my file that I imported here is a little bit um, softer than most tracks. Um, it really doesn't depend on the level of the track that's coming in, unless, of course, it's boosted so loud that this is going to cause some distortion. And that can happen because there's 12 dB of boost here, and some frequencies don't necessarily need it, but a lot of these presets, you're going to see Gavin himself will boost these frequencies quite a bit. So what you want to do is kind of find a good level with your EQ for your song and find a good makeup gain and threshold on the solid state compressor and input drive push settings for your track. It's always going to depend on the track loaded. Um, some people will load a track that's already been mastered into Lurson and they're going to hear a little bit of distortion because you're taking a track that's already so loud and making it even louder. Um, this is really for something that's been mixed and you're taking it to the mastering process. So I just wanted to touch on that for a second. Um, if you notice, this little guy will open up um, your options for file. It's going to be new, open, open recent. Um, great little tool. And this up here is your export option. So you can export the current song or the entire um, project. So what that means is you can see there's a couple of songs here. Um, you can see some are louder than others. Um, these are from all of these uh, the other tutorials that we've been doing through the weeks. If you haven't seen them, um, definitely check them out. Uh, like and subscribe so you can stay tuned every week. Uh, we do giveaways at the end of every episode. So this week we're giving away LMC for iOS and Mac PC. Stay tuned to the end. Um, but okay, so when you're in the export option, um, you have Wave, AIF, you have all the different project sample rates that you can select. Make sure, I like to make sure my project sample rate matches the file that I'm, I'm throwing in there. So if I'm working in 48 with all the files, use a 48 project. Uh, but that's a whole other topic. You can read up on sample rates and stuff like that. Sound on Sound has some excellent articles on that. They're really smart guys over there. Um, and always match the bit depth. So I use CD quality settings here, 44.1, 16-bit, nothing crazy. And um, for when you do change sample rates, you can use some dithering options. It's going to help eliminate some um, possible issues when it comes to changing those, those kinds of things. So um, really quick tools. Browse, throw it anywhere on your computer. You can see I have my project here. Um, but I'm going to just stick to the rec open recent there just to show you guys that. So um, on top of that, you have the info button, which is going to go over like the version number. You can see the build number. If you ever work with support, you're going to love that little section. It's going to explain to them a lot more um, than you'd think. Uh, so you can check, close that out, click anywhere. And you have authorization manager, this little lockup here. So this is going to open the authorization manager and let you authorize um, if that's red, that means you're not authorized. You have a 10-day demo period, but after that, you will hear some white noise bursts, so definitely best to authorize as soon as possible. Um, cool. So that's the chain that you're going through. That's the sounds and everything. Um, this next part, I'm going to show you guys all these different tools for editing your automation. You can see I have different automation options here, touch, write, off and read. Um, what I'm set to is read here because I've already done this um, earlier and um, it's just going to read this automation that I've written out and you can add nodes with a, a quick click and you can delete them with the little trash button here. The draw tool turns on and off so if you don't want to draw anything, you don't want to mess with it, you can keep that open and view it. Um, if you want to select multiple nodes, just go like that. And if you want to, say, delete multiple nodes, you have the trash can, or you can set them to zero. I'm going to do that real quick just so you can see it. Um, it's a really useful tool uh, when you're writing an automation real time. So all set to zero. So let's go ahead and reload my project. Cool. So I'm going to show you guys the, the touch option. Um, if you're not familiar, write is going to say whatever is on the screen is going to be written. Um, so if I don't move any knobs, it's going to write 42% for my push. It's going to put zero for my input, and these are going to be my other values. If you put touch, that's a really cool tool. I'm going to just show you that. I'm not going to necessarily use it 
properly here, but watch when I move the knob, you're going to see automation written. I'm just going to do the input. And you can see it wrote those little nodes right there. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to delete that, bam, it's gone. Um, I love the, the touch option. Write's a little risky because if you have anything written there, it will overwrite it. Touch is cool because it's going to go back to whatever was written after you've made your edits. Touch for me is the best. And then read when you're done or off if you don't touch automation. The automation is key for me in mastering because it keeps it dynamic and... Um, it keeps things alive and that's what you want to do. Um, so that's pretty much everything in the interface. Uh, if you missed anything that I've covered so far, um, check out the beginning of this video. Um, we're going to be giving away LMC at the end. That's the iOS version and Mac PC, um, completely free just for staying tuned. That's a $300 value of, of mastering programs at your disposal. Um, you can see I selected the, the preset here. I just want to show you guys that too. Um, you can select and save, delete all of these settings here. It's going to recall your style as well. So that's going to be your signal chain. That's what the style essentially is, is your signal chain and some basic settings. Um, but yeah, so that's the whole Lursen console standalone. Now I'm going to take you into the DAW before we drop this off into iOS and make some final edits for, say, the car test. So let's go ahead and close this guy. I'm going to launch my Ableton project. So give this a second here. I think I saw a good question. Is it worth paying for the iOS upgrades when you have the PC version? That's a very good question. And honestly, for me, it is because you're going to be going back and forth from, say, doing the car test to your mixing desk. And you, you want that automation to retain. You want the, the values that you're setting when you're in the car to prop back over to... to the desktop so you don't really need to do too much back and forth but okay great so projects loaded load it from your vst3 section all dolls are a little bit different here but for ableton you just click and drag once it's on your track you can see i have the interface here nice and big you have very similar interface you're missing your files file section here the export section but you still have your chain view. Um, you're also missing waveform view. And you have no audio, audio MIDI setup. That's because it's taken care of by the DAW. Um, make sure to always set your settings in the DAW before getting started. And if you're not familiar with, with uh, mixing and mastering in general, normally like to have a larger buffer size than when recording. So I normally go one or 1024, maybe 2048. Uh, it kind of it frees up some processing power and you don't necessarily need latency free audio when you're, when you're mixing or mastering. Um, I'm sure everyone's opinion on that kind of just kind of differs, but yeah, you still have the HD engine here. You have the DDM. So everything you export is going to be similar to standalone GUI size, standard, small. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to just play the track. You're going to see my automation does move and I have some extra parameters here. You can see I can move the individual EQ sections. So you get a little bit more control and you also get to move the threshold for your solid state compressor, the makeup gain and this threshold. So you have full control over all these parameters when you're in the DAW. Um, so this is an excellent tool if you mainly work in say Pro Tools, Ableton Live, um, Logic Pro X, anything like that. It works in all major DAWs. So I'm just going to play the track one more time. If anybody's missed it earlier, you're going to hear it. It's, it's exactly the same. I'm going to bypass and unbypass. Um, so those who are just tuning in can watch and listen.
So you can see I did I did a very similar thing as I did with the standalone program inside the DAW. I didn't go too in depth here because you've already heard the sounds from the standalone and you can run back to the, to the beginning of the video if you want to see those over again and hear the differences in, in some of the things that have changed. Um, but let's go ahead and I'm going to just tweak some settings. I'm going to delete my automation just so you can hear how these different controls affect the sound. Um, and then once I do that, we're going to transfer the project to iOS. And I'm going to show you guys how you can continue to do the car test and save your settings. Um, but if you're tuning in now, make sure to stay to the very end. Uh, we're going to be giving away Lursa Mastering Console for Mac PC and iOS. Um, that's over $300 worth of value for, of mastering software. Um, for anyone in home studio set setup, it's perfect. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. If you don't have an IK Multimedia account, make one um, when we get to the end of the video, and that's how you're going to win. So let's go ahead and take a look, or take a listen rather, and I'm going to just move a couple of controls so you can hear what they sound like. Okay, so you can hear all of these different controls and how they affected my audio signal. Really, it's best for you to listen to your tracks yourself um, and really see what you like. Uh, the iOS app is completely free to start. Um, you don't have to upgrade it if you don't like the sound, but you can definitely try it out, see what your mixes would sound like through Lursen, and um, really get the full experience without having to buy something. Um, I see a good question here. We only have VU meters. We don't have LUFS. Um, which is a really cool value um, if you're not familiar. We do offer that in T-Rex 5, though. So if you have T-Rex 5 metering, you do have LUFS, which is nice and easy to, um, to tell the, the perceived loudness of a signal. Um, so, all right, let's go ahead. I'm going to jump out of the DAW here, and I am going to open iTunes up. I'm going to show you guys how I transferred to iOS and how that worked exactly. Okay, so when you're in here, um, in iTunes, you can select your iOS device. It's going to be in this upper right-hand corner. And when you're in the iOS device, you have file sharing. Now, file sharing has every single app that's installed on your device. And you can see the files that are in it, right? So this project here, I drag and dropped from my, um, from my desktop into the app, quick and easy. So you can see my project lives on iOS. Um, just from just from dragging and drop, no extra buttons. And if I wanted to say take my project and export back to Mac PC, you can go here and press save, and it'll save to your desktop. Um, and now you have your project on Mac on your desktop. Listen to it, see how it sounds. Send it back to iOS. You can use the add file button to also add your files your your project back in. But um, it's going to be the LMCP folder. Um, so you can see that just went through real easy. Let's go ahead and open up the iOS version. And you're going to see it's very similar. 
almost every single control that you have on Mac PC is on iOS. Um, you can see that my project is ready to go. You can notice all the automation retains, which is the most crucial part for me. When I make an automation edit in the car, it sticks to when I get to, to my computer. Um, you can see the same preset section, styles, all the songs from my project are all there. They all load quick and easy. Same input drive. I'm not going to give you guys an audio tutorial here because the way that this is set up, it's streaming. So it won't exactly give you a, a proper representation, but Mac PC and iOS sound um, spot on. So definitely uh, take a listen a little bit earlier on the video if you're just getting here. And for those of you who are not aware, we're giving away this iOS app at the end of the video. And we're also giving away the Mac PC version. So you're going to have um, a full mastering console for your desktop and inside your car um, with, your, with your Bluetooth speakers. If you want to just listen on the iPad speakers to how it sounds, a lot of listeners only listen through their iPhone nowadays or earbuds. Um, so yeah, quick and easy, transfers over, and you see all my controls, all the same. I have the same automation parameters, which is cool because when you write the touch automation with your fingers, it does feel, feel natural to kind of push and pull and let go of things and you can double tap to reset the default. So, all right, let's go ahead and we're gonna see a couple of the differences. You have this question mark in the upper right that tells you tool tips, and it's gonna explain every little detail of the screen and how you use it. Um, if you want, you can also go to the menu settings, or sorry, just the menu, and you can go to help, and it's gonna show you the user manual as well, which is gonna be a full in-depth um, guide to how each one of these controls interact with your sound. If you were interested in all the things I was saying earlier about the in-depth values of the compressors, of um, why the solid state EQ, you can't move it, it's all explained in the manual. They did a really good job on that. And um, we also have some great videos from Lurson talking about it himself, uh, Gavin Lurson. And also his, his assistant Ruben is really great at explaining these things. Definitely check out our last NAM demo with them. They did an excellent job. Um, so you can see when you change pages, the tool tips do transfer over. So quick and easy to kind of know what you're doing if you're not familiar. Um, then when you go here, you're going to see a couple of different things. You're going to have a little add button instead of, um, similar to the file menu on, on Mac PC. You're going to have an export option, which a lot of people don't quite understand. You're going to see, um, all the different options for wave. You can see that there's compressed and uncompressed formats. Compressed formats do not have a sample rate or bit depth just by the nature of them. So if you see them grayed out, that's completely natural. Or completely normal, sorry, not natural. Uh, so if you go to wave, you're gonna see that you do have the sample rate option and you do have a bit depth option. And if you weren't, if you didn't see it on Mac PC, you will see that there is in this upper left hand corner, the sample rate and the bit depth of the track you've just imported. So that way you don't mess anything up when you down sampling, up sampling, anything like that. Um, I like to always kind of stay in the same values just because I don't want to mess with things too much like that. Some people are very familiar and very good at it. Um, there, okay, I see a good question in the, in the message box. Sorry, I missed over a little bit earlier. It, is there an undo? Unfortunately, no, there's no undo at this time, but we can pass that along to the, um, to the team. Uh, we do have a wish list on the IK forum. If you don't participate, definitely jump in there. Some great guys talking back and forth, sharing good jams, uh, mainly made with IK stuff. So if you have any questions, our, our whole team, um, our, our whole team of users out there are, are more than happy to help. DDM does meet the standards for all for streaming services out there. It'll get you on Apple Music stuff like that. Um, so you don't have to worry about that too much. You're going to see in this export option, you do have, um, bit depth, dither on and off, but you don't see that, that, uh, that DDM option. That's actually going to be here in the settings. So go to menu, the little hamburger button in the upper right hand corner. All of our apps operate that same way. You're going to have HD engine and digital distribution mastering with the full explanation right there. You don't have to go to the user manual. It's right in your face. Um, so it's, it's pretty much mastered for iTunes. Check that on if you're going to be posting to, um, to Apple Music and stuff like that. 
Um, you have auto sleep, which uh, I like to keep off because it can pull a little bit of power. So if you hear clicks and pops, go ahead and turn that guy off. Um, so I have my HD engine on. I can turn on DDM. It's nice and easy. And that's going to affect my export. And you're going to see that I have three options for export at the bottom. File sharing, SoundCloud, and more. File sharing will get you to the Mac PC section that we were at before. So let me show you my computer. And you're going to see this section right here is where the file will appear with that option. So back on iOS, if you see uh, file sharing, that's a quick, easy way to go back to your computer. Um, if you use more, which a lot of people don't see, it's going to process your, your entire project or the song, depending on what option you selected. And then it's going to give you a couple more options of how you can export. Um, it's based on, off of some of the iOS stuff. So I'll, I'll wait for it to process, show you guys the different options. But if you're just tuning in here, make sure to like and subscribe. We're going to be giving away this software at the end of the episode. So that's Lurson Mastering Console for iOS. Completely unlocked and Mac PC. Over $300 value. Um, if you don't have an IK Multimedia account, go ahead and make one now. That's how we're going to be giving it away. We're just going to ask a quick question at the end of the episode. Nothing too major. We do not sell these um, options separately, um, like the 2BQ and all that, but we do have Varium compressors inside of T-Rex 5. The Dynamu is my favorite one. It's, it's one of the newest ones, comes with T-Rex 5. Um, so inside here, you're gonna see save to files, all the different options for iOS, copy to all the apps that you have installed. Um, this really depends on what you have installed. So if an option's missing, go ahead and just, um, Download the app. It should appear here. Um, if it doesn't appear there, it's the app might not support it. But you can copy to the to the clipboard. Save to files. My favorite and email. Um, so that's going to be the more export option. And I see somebody asked, "What's the best way to transfer?" So that's actually what I just was covering. So if you see sound file sharing, that's where you're going to go from iOS to Mac PC. If I go back to my desktop, the file sharing section is where I can also drag and drop files to go into the iOS app. So that's going to be your back and forth right there. So the iOS file sharing option and the actual file sharing option in iTunes. So that's the way to, to transfer your project. Cool. So... Oh, I did cover that a little bit earlier on, so if, if you guys are just tuning in, jump to the beginning of this video. You're going to hear some audio examples of how everything sounds. Um, we are wrapping up here. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're giving away Lurson Master and Console in a couple of minutes. Uh, Mac PC and iOS completely unlocked. Um, let's go ahead and pull up that Lurson interface one more time. But um, yeah, so if you're just tuning in now, jump back to the beginning of the video. Like and subscribe so you're alerted of all our future videos. Um, and if you don't win today's giveaway, we do have a bunch of different stuff on sale right now. 70% off Lurson Mastering Console for Mac PC and iOS. So if you missed the, promote, if you missed the giveaway, um, you still save 70% until June 2nd. Jump in now. It's not going to last forever. Um, we also have All In On Analog, which is 60% off analog module model titles like Amplitude, T-Rex 5 Max, Hammond B3X, Syntronic, and more. Um, so if you wanted that tube um, compressor from earlier, uh, the Varimu, check out T-Rex 5, excellent collection. T-Rex 5 Max gets you even more um, full, full information on our website. Check the description for some links to all these promotions. Um, we have the Total Studio Spectacular, which is 75% off a of Total Studio to max, which is, um, I believe still extended, uh, if my mod would let me know. Uh, but yeah, check out the website, all these great promotions. They won't last forever. Um, and if you're tuning in this and you're not live, check the description for our promotions page. It's going to tell you what's live now and what you guys can really win. But all right, so I'm going to play this track one more time to give you guys another audio example and show you guys exactly what happens. Um, go to open recent, 
load the project. It's going to pull up all of my data here. I used Americana Loose for this track. Um, this is the track that we made in the custom shop live stream video. So if you want to check that out, you're going to see how we made it with all free stuff. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead. I'm going to just play it back and I'm going to let you guys create an IK multimedia account. Um, that's how you're going to win the Lurson Mastering Console at the very end of the episode. We're going to email whatever e um, email is linked to that IK account, the promo code for iOS, and we're just going to um, hook up your IK Multimedia account with the Mac PC software. So go ahead and create an account now, and I'm going to play back this, this great project. All right, great. So that, that was the track with a couple of bypass on and off just when the parts repeated. Hopefully you can hear all the differences that I've made. When I'm pushing the input drive, I'm keeping the push normal. And when I'm keeping the input drive normal, I'm pushing the EQ to give me a couple of the different harmonics that I want. Um, and I see a couple of great questions. We're going to start this giveaway in a couple of seconds. Let me see if I can get to those first. Um, if, also, if you guys own Lurson Mastering Console for Mac PC and iOS, please don't participate today and let somebody else win. If you only own one of them, that's perfectly fine. Just let us know once you have one and we'll pick a second winner. Um, we do stream uh, every Tuesday here at 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And if you look in the description, you're going to see when we stream on Instagram. And also, we do another YouTube Live, uh, I believe, Wednesdays. At 4 p.m., always the same time. So check that out. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, let's jump into this giveaway. So I want you guys to throw in your answer to the chat box. And I want to hear what is your favorite mastering engineer? And if you don't know any, let us know your favorite mix engineer or audio engineer in general. And we'll accept any of those for a chance to win. Again, that question is who is your favorite mastering engineer? And if you don't know anyone, let us know who your favorite mix engineer or audio engineer is. We'll accept any of those for a chance to win. So go ahead and shoot your answers into the box. We're going to leave this open for a little bit. I'm going to play back the track so um, we, we eat up some, so you guys can hear a little bit more. And, um, and we're going to pick somebody to win Larson Mastering Console for iOS and Mac PC, completely unlocked, over $300 value. Ah, I see someone likes T-Rex 5 over LMC. Personally, I think they go hand in hand. You can send all of your tracks from uh, T-Rex 5 when you've mixed in your DAW and then throw it into Lurson at the end. Uh, but the T-Rex 5 does have a bunch of great tools for, for mastering as well. The one module is my favorite. Uh, very similar. Already some great answers in here. Sorry, I'm a little latent, as I'm sure you've noticed. Andrew Shabs, Warren Hewart, Dave Pensada. I don't want to murder any of these names. Awesome. Keep it going, guys. Um, we're going to leave this open for a couple minutes and we're going to pick somebody at random. So it's not about who you picked, if we like them or anything like that. Let them roll in. My mod's going to pick somebody in a couple of minutes. If you're just tuning in now, like and subscribe so you're alerted for the next video that we do and all of our all of the latest developments. But all right, here, I'm going to go ahead and play this, this track one more time for those of you who missed it and let some of these answers roll in. Um, if you guys don't win, remember, there is a 70% off discount on both iOS and Mac PC right now. So you're still going to be able to get this great software and rewatch this video to go over all the different tools and how to use it. Let's go ahead and play that track one more time. I'm going to let some more answers come in. And again, that question is, what is your favorite mastering engineer? 
If you don't have a favorite mastering engineer, what is your favorite audio engineer or mixing engineer? Um, and if you're not familiar with too many engineers, definitely look them up because those are the guys who are sculpting your sound. Even if you like a particular art artist, it's always good to know their engineer. Listen to similar stuff by them. It's a great um, way to reverse engineer different tips and tricks from all these great guys. I know a lot of them do like a mix with the masters and stuff like that. So um, just a note. All right, let's go ahead and listen. Right, great. So I'm going to be picking a winner here in just a couple of moments. And I just wanted to say uh, thank you guys for all tuning in. We appreciate all the comments, all the views. Um, definitely stay tuned every week and comment any, any suggestions you have for future videos. Uh, we've definitely seen some good suggestions so far. So keep them rolling. Give us some content that you guys want to see and we'll make it. We are always listening to you guys. Um, Also, I did want to mention, I see in the comments, I don't know if the mod covered it yet because the, the slight latency on my voice. Um, when you use that solid state EQ, that's actually the secret sauce um, that they add on top of their, their signal after the tube equalizer. So that's the reason why you can't change the settings. It's actually something that they've done um, on purpose. So if you haven't seen any of our, view, our, move, ah, any of our videos from Lurson um, and Ruben talking, definitely jump into those. They're on our YouTube channel. We have a bunch of great talks. They explain each one of these pieces of gear, how to use it, how they use it, and how it compares to their setup. Uh, they also go over how they designed their setup and all these really cool in-depth things you really wouldn't think to hear from, um, from a mastering engineer. Um, it, it's really great. Definitely check it out. And also, one last, one last little trick. You have a link knob down here. If you guys aren't familiar, you can turn that off, and now you have two different values that you can then move around for your left and right. So if you wanted to, say, make a particular instrument stand out and your guitar is panned to the left, boost the left a little bit. Sorry, grabbed the wrong one. And then you can bring it back and kind of just push one side. Um, not too often of a tool that you're going to use, but definitely worth it. Okay, so we do have a winner here. I'm sorry if I get this name wrong, but congratulations to Leo Fred. If you can send us your IQ Multimedia account um, username in the, the comment box, we're going to add you the Lurson Mastering Console from Mac PC, and then we're going to email the, the tied email to your account the iOS promo codes that's going to unlock the complete iOS app. Congratulations, you just got yourself a whole mastering suite uh, to take back and forth from your car to your desktop. Super quick and easy to use. Check out this video once you got it up and running. Um, go over all the little nuances and enjoy, man. That's, that's, that's going to be a great little tool during this whole um, 
situation that we're in, which by the way, I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Thank you guys again for tuning in. So don't forget to shoot us your username in the, um, in the chat box. That's what we're going to use to give you all of your awesome software. And then, <laughs> and then once we have your, your, um, info, we're going to hook you guys up. Um, congratulations again. If you're just tuning in now, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video and your chance to win some great software. Um, if you didn't win today, remember 70% off Lurson Mastering Console. Um, it's not going to last forever, so jump on to the website and um, I would suggest ordering as soon as possible. Check the description for all of our latest promotions and more information on LMC. That's Lurson Mastering Console for both Mac, PC, and iOS. Nice. If you own the iLoud MTM, these are gonna, this is going to be a perfect complement. It's going to get your sound nice and ready for the, stream, uh, the streaming world with no worries about ever, ever being too loud or too soft. Your viewers are going to get the best possible quality. Thank you again for tuning in, Lee Fred, and congratulations. So we're actually going to wrap up here, and I just want to say thank you again, everyone, for, for tuning in. Catch us here every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time and on Instagram Live every other day at 4 p.m. Uh, we also do Wednesdays at 4 p.m. on YouTube Live. Check out uh, the Audio Toolbox. We have a bunch of different interviews with awesome artists, engineers, and stuff like that. Um, if you guys haven't seen our previous videos, they're all still up. We have one on Moto Drum, Moto Bass, Sample Tank 4, uh, Mirror Slap Philharmonic 2, making your strings nice and realistic, the Uno Drum and Uno Synth, and Amplitude 4, I believe. There's also one on the custom shop that goes over how to use all the free stuff and how it, um, how the trials work and all that great, all those little nuances. Okay, so it looks like we, we, we got all the information for our winner. Congratulations again, and thank you guys for staying tuned. Um, remember to throw your suggestions for future videos in the comment box, and uh, check out the description for a bunch of different um, promotions and our live stream schedule. Thanks again, guys. Tune in next week. We appreciate you guys. Stay safe and healthy.